got there. I have some trivia. You have some trivia in a box? Some Bollywood trivia. What? What? Ready? I'm ready. What actor plays the role of Dr. Cliff Patel in Silver Linings Playbook? I thought you said this was Bollywood. It is. Silver Linings Playbook is Hollywood. I'm guessing he was in it? You know who this is. I'm going to guess it's Irfan. Anupam Kerr. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's, that's poignant. That's did you did you choose that specifically for this intro? I just saw his name. Just randomly, you just <laughs> opened it. <and> yeah. <laughs> wow. Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions of Corbin. I'm on a pump car. So these, or it's oh. actually care. I've been told it's actually a car. Ah, but you know that's semantics. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not to be confused with Samantha's. Samantha's? Yes. Oh, semantics wow. and Samantha's. What happens is Samantha goes hiking, and then she comes back covered in ticks, and so it's semantics. It's me, Jessica. Welcome to the internet, boys and girls. You are my Sonia. You are. You, you are, are my Sonia. Sonia. Classic. Today we're doing a movie review. <laughs> And we're doing it over the 2009 film. What? Wake up, Sid! Seriously! <laughs> Do you know what time it is? It is. It's movie time. Movie time. Directed uh, and I believe written by Ayan Mukherjee, right? Great last name. Uh, who is also the director of Brahmastra and Yai Juani. Yai Juani. I wonder uh, if they were talking about Brahmastra back then. Uh, pr- uh, 2009. So nah, not yet. He not says yet. it was a 10-year process. I, I believe this was his directorial debut. Ah. Uh, so probably not yet. Yeah. Maybe he had it in the back of his mind, but probably wasn't, I'd imagine, <laughs> planning the biggest, <laughs> most expensive movie ever yet. No, but that's how far back they go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have, uh, he only likes to work with uh, Renbeer. <laughs> yeah. Which is exclusive. Exclusively. Renbeer. They have a contract together. Yeah. The Scorsese an and uh, Leo of the uh, <laughs> of Bollywood. But it's uh, obviously starring Renbeer Kapoor. Yep. Bot. Uh, Konkana Sen Sharma. Yep. And then uh, Sup- Supriya Pathik. And Anapom Kerr. Or Kerr, as my uh, wife would say. Uh, Care is that Bengali? Yeah, Kur. Like no, oh, oh. you know no. she speaks Hindi. <laughs> no, she. <doesn't. laughs> uh, it's a uh, Ranbir Kapoor. Yeah, Kapoor, and Konkona Shon <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm she's sorry. Bengali. Yes, uh, but and that is uh, the wonderful actress, uh, also known as Shay Kapoor's stepmother. Yes. That's that's how she wants to be known. Must Maybe be known that way. I don't know. Maybe oh. she's very proud of being. Do you think? Conconus and Sharma? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> no, she's not her stepmom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> obviously uh, this came out in 2009. Uh, almost all of you. If have you seen haven't this movie. seen it, wake up, Sid. If your name is Sid, let us know down in the comments below. This is we're off the rails already. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but it'll be 100 cents for the view. You've all seen this movie. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you haven't watched it, we uh, Netflix? Did we see it on Netflix? Netflix. It was on Netflix. At least here so in the States. You can go check that bad boy out. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. This is my kind of movie. Hold on. Wait. You're a Ranbir hater. No, I'm really not. I don't so know is, why. Is this justice for Ran? You've hated no, every single Ran Bear movie. That is such a lie. Of all time. Lies. You've never liked it. You think Lies. he's ugly. Lies. <laughs> and you think he has a small wiener. I don't, I don't say it. I didn't make that up. That's all you. That is all you. It's so funny. <laughs> because I had the initial response that I did and then went back and revisited and realized I was wrong. Something you never do. <sighs> well, uh, I'm never is, wrong, is, is, Nick. Is to discover... That uh, no, I, this kind of film is already gonna be. It already has a win for being like a rom com because I love them so much. Mm-hmm. But it also could have gone wrong in a lot of ways. In mm-hmm. fact, oh, yeah. we were watching it, and the primary thing for for me is why it works is just because he and and Konkana, Konkana are yeah. just so good together, and it's just a really feel good, lots of fun. I enjoyed it. I believed them mm-hmm. throughout, and it's it's. I don't, you know, it's not one of those films that is intending at all to be like this award-winning cinema. It's no, not that kind not of movie. Trying to be in it's the, the kind of movie that makes you feel good, and I, yeah. I, I really liked it a lot. 
Right when I was done, I texted uh, the team and I said, just watch Wake Up Sid. And they said, please tell me what you thought. And I said, I think, I don't know, because I have to, it's difficult. I said, it yeah. could be my favorite Ren Beer movie. Oh! It could be, but also, because obviously the other two in the running are obviously going to be um, yeah, it Tamasha. Doesn't, it doesn't surpass Tamasha for me. No, Tamasha and, and um, uh, Barfi. Yeah. Both of whom, artistically, obviously better films. Yes. But though I, I described it as, I was like, I would never tell somebody 10 Things is one of Heath Ledger's best performances. Right. Or best movies. But it's going to be one of my favorites regardless. I will watch 10 Things I Hate About You. Right. Which has the same kind of cliches. Right. Almost dated stuff that's going on. But it's such a feel-good movie. I will watch that over better performances in Brokeback right. Mountain or uh, sure. and, 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 or different performances like that of his yep. that, I, that I really, really enjoy. And it's different because those, like Brokeback Mountain is a really dramatic film yeah. as opposed to Tamasha, which is still a really fun film. And, it is. And, and a good film like that. And Barfi as well. Great performances. But I, I, I agree with you. But I, this is one of the ones, it's just a, it's an easy watch. Yes. And you're just going to enjoy yourself. I would... I have to be in a particular mood to watch Tamasha and Barfi. Yeah. This could come on at any time. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost gets it almost gets that feeling of a Shah Rukh Khan movie of I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna enjoy myself. Not as almost whimsical, I think, as a Shah Rukh Khan movie. Those yeah. are those are their own beasts, I feel like, especially the nineties ones and, and all that kind of stuff. No, this but is it, like Dilda Hak Nadeau. It's like yeah. that just everybody's really good and when it's over you feel good and you really like the message you and... know what's going to happen the right, entire of time you do like it immediately when i said go run after the girl yeah he obliged and R he ran after right her when he talked the about the rain in the beginning of the monsoons oh, yeah. me and my wife were they're gonna meet each other end. End. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's 100 percent that was gonna happen <laughs> and it did nothing surprises but you, you you don't care the and when i was talking to the group they said yeah it's not the best movie and it's a lot of cliches i'm like this film's supposed to have cliches exactly like th you're not looking for uh, like something to ch invent the wheel the, the no. new wheel in these style of films especially obviously it's 2009 so it's like what almost 15 years old even yeah um and so you're just looking to like have a good time you don't care that it's cliche that's what these films are for <laughs> no but it, the, the thing about it is that even though it is cliche and even though it's going to be predictable the writing and the acting are done in such a way as yeah. is the directing the, and the score i want to talk about the score that's that's done in such a way that everybody's committed to the believability and so it works they're not playing the clichés they're not looking to do this in a way that's anything other than just grounded and as believable this isn't shakespeare it's not supposed to be shakespeare yeah. this is supposed to be this kind of film i believed these guys were these people as well as their friends i believed the people in the workplace and you just wind up walking away thinking about this as a, a, a believable story and we're americans and we've related to this film on on many levels but i'm sure as indians especially young indians growing up if you've obviously know somebody who has grown up very entitled or, right. or, or like just had everything handed to them, um, or also you, you're trying to find your own path in life that doesn't line up with everyone else's, which yeah. is very relatable, I think, to anybody in the world. Which is also a theme in Tamasha. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I, that's one of the things I really enjoyed because I was nervous because I was like, are they going to make them try to like get like, oh, uh, there's, this is not a, like I said, this is not like a in new inventing of the wheel. Movies have been made about, Immature people that, you know, universal get, truth get going and yeah. like they're childish and then they're like, oh, I got a career now. But sometimes I'm like, not everybody fits into that career mold. Right. Don't put this guy who might not want to be in a traditional exactly office space. He wants to do something a little more creative. Yeah. Let him do that. I'm glad that they went that avenue that that allowed to show because obviously in India it's even more taboo than it is here. Yep. I, uh, I, I mentioned that to Indrani, which is something I knew going in. I just, she confirmed it was, you know, how many, how many kids. Had she seen this kids? Oh, yeah. yeah, she, yeah. That's what she wanted to watch it yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. She loves it. Yeah. So we watched it together and I said, that's really common, isn't it? And kind of rhetorical question where a, a son who would be born into a family and when he's through college, he still isn't really sure about the direction he wants to go. Then it's just a foregone you are following in dad's footsteps. I yeah. mean, that is the expectation. And sometimes that's the expectation from much, much younger, too. So I, 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 one of my favorite things about the story that I thought was really great was adding the element, that his, adding the element that his dad 
is had a love for, for photography too. I thought that added a really nice uh, aspect in their relationship that mm -hmm. would have made this film less lovely without it. I, I yeah. that's one of my favorite things. About I, the film. I really enjoyed Anupam Kerr. Oh yeah. Uh, he, obviously, I think he's a fantastic actor. He's very good in his comedic roles, but then I also I think he's an underrated dramatic actor because uh, he brought it. And like normally, like we've seen him as the quirky dad in a couple of things. He was just strict, straight. A forward dad but it also wasn't the stereotypical Indian no, he, dad either he wasn't an asshole no like he obviously had his principles and what he wanted and, and stuff like that but he also loved his son yep uh, like the, the beginning i was like you're gonna give him a car for working 30 days what right. the hell right exactly <laughs> what, is, what is going on but there, there are rich people that yeah. do that I, but then you, you saw his justification he's like i want to I want to work with my son. I also right. want to help him get get going in life, and so this is how he thought he was helping. And then you had that moment, and you kind of understood the dad. Sure. When he when they had that big falling out, you're like you, yeah, and, which you, is good writing. Yep. You want to understand both sides, uh, even though uh, oftentimes you're not supposed to understand Ranbir's side because he's a he's a spoiled yeah he's very spoiled brat absolutely, and he doesn't really know what he's doing, and that it's kind of his whole story but i liked the arc and the way Anupam Kaur portrayed Agreed. his and obviously um i don't want to just call her shade stepmom i want to know i'm sorry because i love that actress i've loved her ever yeah. since ramalila yeah uh, supriya, supriya as well very different performance this very is a much more subtle oh, but yeah. still she brought that weight to it and she's she's a uh, one of the i think better underrated actresses in all of india and again great writing the fact that when he goes to see her he all he does is it was very obvious that the mangoes couldn't have been from anyone but his mom mm -hmm. and she thought she could maybe just you know don't tell them they're from me and he's like yeah i know my mom yeah and it was so interesting how they wrote these parents because obviously when she went she wanted to see where he, he was living mm -hmm. and she wanted to give her money right uh to for because she knew her son yeah his son doesn't have any he <laughs> wasn't gonna pay him of course but then at the end when she was like i don't want you to get the wrong idea we're not I'm, we're just friends but she didn't actually say anything mm -mm. which i thought was way better than like her actually like them coming to like this under she just touched her face she just, mm -hmm. you don't know if she believed her you don't know if she didn't believe her exactly like, i don't care you're taking care of my son and i'm i want to thank you yes I, I i like that representation of even though they're they're, they're parents and they want their son to grow up and mm -hmm. and obviously take responsibilities right it's still their son, and they, exactly. they, they care more about him than they do him in any certain and, avenue. And, and assuredly would not approve of him living with a girl, mm -hmm. but that, I agree with you. Yeah. Not scripting anything, just having her touch her face is way more powerful. It wouldn't surprise me if that wasn't written either. Yeah, absolutely. With, Could with, have just some, been with an moment. actress like her, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, Ren Beer, I want to talk about, obviously he's the lead in this one. Yeah. We got a little off track here. Yeah. Um, I his his character was relatable in a lot of ways but also obviously not relatable in certain ways obviously mm -hmm. because <laughs> it's fun like when he was making the eggs when i was dating my wife i did not know how to make eggs <laughs> i'm not even kidding i had to call when i was i lived in san diego uh when i was probably 20 i want to say uh or maybe 19 but i had to i, <laughs> I wanted to make some scrambled eggs and I, I wow forget Forget, like, over easy. You're talking, you didn't even know how to make a scrambled I'm egg. I'm still not, I don't enjoy cooking. Like, there's people that, like, my my mom apparently tried to teach us all, but apparently we showed no interest. And then all when all th uh, three of my brothers left, they all showed interest in learning how to cook and okay. doing all, those, my bro all three of my brothers. I still hate it. I still hate <laughs> cooking. It's maybe it's the ADD, ADHD. I just, I can't focus. And it, even though there's recipes I can make, I still have to it's literally too linear. I, I have to have the recipe in front of yeah, me it's and too I linear. have to know what's going on. I can understand that um, with you. <laughs> and so it was very relatable. When was, I have no idea how to make eggs. Were, I you, did you, were you as excited as he was when you finally figured it out? Yeah. Oh, I was very proud. Oh, yeah. But I've also burnt eggs. Apparently, it's hard to mess up eggs. Huh? I've burnt the shit out of eggs. Yeah, that's it's tough. real bad. <laughs> it's real bad. I know how to make eggs now. I don't want to shoot. <laughs> I'm much older than I was then. But it was very relatable at that point. Not the. Rich parents never had. No, that. I can't relate <laughs> I to that at all. From, I was working from age of fourteen because my parents were like, "If you want money, you're gonna have to work." Yeah, <laughs> so that cannot that was, relate to that. That was not relatable, but it was. Uh, I liked his trajectory arc. Uh, Rambeer's a fantastic actor, of course. Um, I mean, obviously, this is not one like the rock stars or the Tamashas that was really asking him to give a 
uh, really Oscar worthy performance, but he did a fantastic job in what he was supposed to do. No, he in get, this. He, you know what he he's very relatable. He doesn't remind me of the actor I'm going to reference, but his capacity as an actor is comparable to this guy. Hmm. Um, Tom Hanks. Yeah, that's an interesting comparison because Tom Hanks can do maybe young Tom Hanks, Captain Phillips, and Castaway, but he can also do. Sleepless in Seattle, and you've got mail. Mm -hmm. And it's because he's himself mm -hmm. in those moments and in those places. And he's a very lovable person. But he is an, he's an incredible actor, so he, he can do, or <laughs> Saving Private Ryan, he can do drama. Mm -hmm. And so the, 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 um, it's the depth and the breadth of what he can do as an actor, because I could tell... He was taking this very seriously. He was putting in... I feel like he probably puts in no different kind of uh, focus as an actor on a film like Wake Up Sid as he would something where he had to be far more in character and, uh, and like in Barfy or a rock star. Mm -hmm. And it shows in his work. And he, he has a quality about him that's perfect for the this character because... There's an innate likability mm -hmm. and a naivete he can convey that, like, not as strong as, like, the, the one who can do it the best for me in all cinema. I, I can't imagine anybody playing naivete m more aptly than Amir Khan. He plays, he plays characters who are naive and innocent with... Because it, it, I think it's just part of who he naturally is. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite attributes of his character in this, is that I, I believed and I liked... Like, I felt bad for him when she said, and she was being honest when she said, I, I want to tell you this. It's going to hurt your feelings. Said, no, no, no. Tell me. She's like, you're too, you're too childish. You're, you're a boy and I need a man. And I was like, she's right, but aw. Yeah. And I, <laughs> it, it, when, once again, I, I want to go back to the, the writing because I obviously, you knew what she was talking about in terms of he, he's not really responsible. Mm -hmm. He takes, he, and it, for, for a second, I was like, you were. You're wanting him to like just like grow up, really? You don't want any of that. And you, in the end, she was like, "I'm a little childish too." Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like. I don't want somebody who likes, even though I love jazz. I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> jazz, I don't know about that. Jazz is fantastic. I love but, jazz. Um, but she realized in the end, she was like, "I kind of like somebody who has a little child." And obviously, he needed to grow up in certain areas. Yeah, it's and, the difference between childish and childlike. Yeah, and, and it was as he started to gain responsibility and respect her space more. Um, it, he he didn't lose his childlikeness, and that's why I think she was able to fall in love with him because she realized, you know what? How much of this is being just irresponsible, childish versus a whimsical childlikeness that most men lose mm. that he has, which makes him so endearing. And I thought she did a lot. I a hundred percent believed she was falling in love with him. Yeah, a hundred percent. She's. <laughs> She's fantastic. Yes, she uh, is. She also has such a beautiful, unique look to her. I, I like... Kankana has such a beautiful look to her. I agree. Yeah. I'm also partial to five-foot-tall, dark-skinned Well, why don't you Bengali, marry Kankana? God. Bengali <laughs> girls. Um, <laughs> and obviously, we've seen her before in, in, in a couple things. Um, but I've always thought she was an extremely talented She's actress. very good. Uh, and it, it was cool seeing her in this kind of like... They're fun together. Because I feel like she is, she likes more heavy duty roles, oftentimes, mm -hmm. uh, based off some. She was in Okara. She was in. Um, she's the lipstick on my burka, which even though I have not well, seen that one yet. Well, and then think about her the, she, writing, directing Death in the Gunge. Death in the Gunge and the Tolvar. She's formidable. Uh, and then there's, uh, do, 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 there's a couple. Uh, oh, this one. Oh, e she was in Seven Kun Moff. Yeah, I totally forgot that. And she was obviously in Yet yep. Dian, which we saw last I Halloween. I totally forgot she was in Seven. Kun so Moff. I feel like she likes a little. Even though she does commercial stuff, I feel like she likes a little more kind of intense I do too. Uh, roles. Um, but, you know, seeing her in this kind of um, will they, won't they mm -hmm. kind of rom -com movie. Rom-com-y yeah. movie. But also, I like the writing a lot because it set it up immediately. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm not going to sleep with you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sleep with you. Uh, I just want you to know that. But then the entire time, you're like, they're obviously going to get together. But then this movie kept going on. I'm like... There's not a lot of time left. No, but and I, mean, I love their friendship. But even though love their friendship, 
in the back of your mind, you always knew it was like you're going to get together in the of rain. I, I know you're going to get together in the <laughs> rain. I, I literally. <laughs> what point was it? Oh, it was like very notebooky. He wasn't getting the fact that he was being a slob and disrespecting her new place that she designed. And I, I straight up, I wasn't being silly. I yelled at the TV in the moment, and I said, "Come on, what are you doing, man? Wake up, Sid." We were dying. We were dying. Speaking of which, you don't want to talk about the soundtrack. I do. <laughs> Wake so, up, Sid. Okay, so yeah, my my wife was singing every song. She, she knew every song. Oh, she knew, song. oh, she knew every I song. Loved, I used to listen to it like while uh, you know my friends drove and like long drives. It used to be like on the a soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what I want to know. If you can check, I didn't check. There was a point in the scoring. That was so beautiful. It was toward the latter part when he's at, when he's about to move away, and he doesn't pick up on the fact that she's fallen in love with him. And your heart's going out to her, and you're thinking, "Come on, kiss her already. Let's see this. Come on." And I thought, this, I bet money that the composer or one of the composers did Lal Singh Chada, but I haven't checked yet. Shankar Mahavan was always a singer. Um, music. Kaho Naho, my name is Khan. My name is Khan. Uh, music. Uh, Amit Trivedi. My name is Khan. Man. It was Amit. Yeah, Amit Trivedi was the composer I don't know, of this movie. I don't know who wrote some of the... But some of the moments in it... Are Nunbar. Were, were as Dost. pretty as the score in Lal Singh Chada. Mm. And I... I I also loved moments where the score is playing and then somebody says something and it stops and there's silence for a minute and then it picks back up when the mood reestablished. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a very nice use of scoring. Where was Kolke? Huh? Why is she credited here? She's Ad Aditi? Did you see Kolke in this? No. No. Sorry, I'm a little distracted here. I was just looking at the cast of the film. And it says Kalki was in. Is she like a? Was she cut? In is she in a party one, scene? Uh, Sid, maybe it's. No, that's a song. Yeah, I don't. I don't. That's weird. yeah. It's maybe it's like the Alia thing when in uh, uh, Ugly. Oh, oh was, yeah, <laughs> she was in like a clip. Yep, I, <laughs> that's uh, strange. But uh, if you know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why is why is, why is Kulky 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 on there credited on IMDb? Credited uh, actress in the film. I don't know, um, but yeah, I thought the score was nice. Uh, it was it was fun to see all those lovely songs, and um, sometimes it's in certain films, and I don't know why this great runtime too. Yeah, sometimes I don't know why some of like the English dialogue seems cringy sometimes. I know. Do you know why? I do. Why? And it always does. Um, and I think it's just because it's so, there's an affectation in the way most Indians, when they speak English in a rom-com and when they're saying things in like a party way, mm -hmm. it's like, it's just like, I think this is the best way to describe it. So Indians will regularly say, isn't it at the end of a sentence, but it grammatically doesn't work the way we use, isn't mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I think that's the same thing when, especially if they're like college aged party goers, there's just something about the way they say it and the way they phrase the words that is so different than the way we say them that it, it you question the actor's authenticity in speaking the well, lines. Well, obviously it's not an issue because it's no, in every single everything, but it's, it is a little cringy. Yeah. And I, I <laughs> I've wanted to figure out why exactly it is. And it's clearly something with my ears because I get it it's too. clearly a very normal way Indians speak. Yep. But it's just when, like when they're speaking English essentially uh, sometimes and they say certain things I'm like oh that was it does it was, sounds like they're trying to give an affectation to the yeah. phrasing uh -huh. but that's just the way they speak. Yeah. It's just strange. And it's because it's so different than the way we say those no. things that it just it, I think it hits English speakers who that's native to them. In the same way that if we tried to say stuff in Hindi, yeah. it would always sound weird. Do you weird. think Karen Johar had a big influence on this film? I'm sure he did. Because this had a lot of heart of a Karen Johar film. I mean, he, he's the producer, so. Yeah. Um, but, like, I feel like 
that's something he's really even though like obviously he can write stuff that's cringy or he can do stuff that's way over the top but he also always brings heart in his films oh yeah every single one which is something we said about Kao Ho Na Ho that it lacked I felt the warm heart feel mm-hmm. which apparently people said that he actually regretted not directing that film mm. he apparently handed it off to somebody ah uh-huh. And he later said he regretted not doing the film. Yeah, I think you'd have to find out as well, because just because it says somebody's producing or exec producing doesn't mean they're necessarily fulfilling those roles the same way in every film. And some films, if they're producing, it's a far more collaborative thing for them. And in other times, all they did was write a check. Yeah, and it's... So this, uh, Ayan, the director... So we've seen, what, three films of his? Uh, yeah, Johnny, Hi Johnny, Hi Johnny. This Brahmastra, Brahmastra. And he can't have done a lot because he's probably been working on Brahmastra for ever, right? Yeah, Wake Up said directorial debut. I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh no, it's just special thanks. I saw Luck by Chance, and I was like, wait a minute, that he couldn't was an have been associate him. director on Swadesh. Hey, uh, wait, 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 writer Swadesh. Uh, associate uh, writer screenplay. Wow. <laughs> Which is funny because I thought one of the weak things in Brahmastra was the screenplay in terms of like the dialogue writing, uh, and that's a, that was a very common. Um, it was. I didn't feel uh, that, but yeah, there no, were no. there were there were, common, you weren't the only one. It was a common critique of the Correct. film that the dialogue felt very forced, which is something that I feel like is not in this film at all. I, no, I feel like it definitely was, is not in Swadesh. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree like with was, you. It's not in this. I felt like everything was justified and was, was really well but done. But clearly he him. also likes love stories. That's like, that's one of his driving forces, I feel like. Yeah, of, and I, that's, of, of I think, a director. and I think that's the heart in all of Karan Johar's things eventually because I think he's a big believer in love stories. Why do you think he's I don't think it's just gossip. I think he genuinely loves and gets so happy to see people get together and that's why that's one of the topics on the couch <laughs> is who are you with and what's going on because I think he genuinely just gets thrilled to hear about love. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he uh did a fantastic job. Some of the critiques uh like some of the supporting cast I didn't love too much. Didn't care too much, though. Um, and nobody was awful. No, um, thankfully. Yeah, nobody was awful. Just some of the sporting ones weren't as strong Agreed. as others. Agreed. So that would be a critique that I can say. Other than that, I'm not really going to critique a lot of it just because it's it's, it's the genre. And like some, like some people said, it has a bunch of cliches. I like the cliches. Me too. I like, when I go into these films, I just want I want to feel good. Yep. But that's... And if you did that, you did your job correctly. And what can I critique <laughs> if that's no the, what I got out of the film, right? This, this is this is exactly what you were expecting. And it, it, yeah. I would watch it again in a yeah, heartbeat. Absolutely. So let us know what you think about this film. Uh, what should be our next Ranbir and Konkana yes. uh, films that we should watch? And uh, clean up after yourselves.